No way, that's impossible. We're living together. You just need to sign the divorce papers. Good luck with your poor life. I stood there, dazed, holding the phone after the call was suddenly cut off. The lawyer couldn't help but burst out laughing. Olivia looked at the lawyer, confused. He was wiping tears with a handkerchief. My name is Karen and I am the CEO. I have been married to my husband, James, for three years. We don't have children. We're both so busy with work, often even on weekends, that we hardly find time for long talks. We mostly see each other in passing, so we try to sync our schedules for overseas trips during our long breaks. It's only once a year, but it's something we both really look forward to. When we got married, we decided to buy a condo on the upper floor of a Bay Area tower. It was a stretch financially, but we thought about the future value of the property. Thanks to that, we're happy with our current life. I have a close friend from high school, Olivia. We sometimes grab lunch together. Olivia is beautiful and has high standards for men. She's not married yet but is eager to be. She looks for well-educated, high-earning men on dating apps and won't compromise on their income. One day, I was having lunch with Olivia at a cafe near a park. We went to high school and university together, even shared the same classes. That's why we've consulted each other about various things over the years knowing quite a bit about each other's dating histories and types. During our student days, we shared both fun and sad times. Those are cherished memories now. Since marrying James three years ago, we've both gotten busier, and the chances to meet have decreased. Now, we only see each other a few times a year. I'll come visit your condo next time, Olivia suddenly said. She'd never been to my place before. Then, on the weekend, she came over. I could tell she was amazed, even through the intercom at the entrance. As soon as I opened the door, Olivia looked impressed. Wow, this place is like a mansion, and that elevator ride was so long. I had chosen a spacious upper floor condo because it was a once-in-a-lifetime purchase. It's even more spacious than a house. It's beautiful, really incredible, Olivia said as she looked around the condo turning her head in every direction. Great location and an upper floor in a high rise like this must have cost a fortune, Olivia remarked with a sly smile. Yeah, you could say it's a million dollar condominium. It's got great security too, I said, but Olivia cut me off, reacting only to the term million dollar condominium. It must be over a million. Your husband must be making a lot, she said, her eyes wide with astonishment. That was so typical of Olivia. She always had high standards for men, especially regarding their income. James's salary is quite good for his age, I guess, I said vaguely. I felt it was tacky to be too explicit. Olivia had a look that seemed to hint at some ulterior motive. Can I use your bathroom? She asked and left the living room. I directed her to the bathroom and then started preparing tea in the kitchen. I was concerned when Olivia took a while to come back. I was about to check on her when she returned, saying, just replying to an email. Olivia usually didn't make excuses like that, so I felt a slight sense of unease. While enjoying the cookies Olivia brought as a gift and having tea, she asked, can I stay till the evening? She apparently wanted to greet James. It had been since our wedding that Olivia last saw James so it wasn't unnatural for her to want to see him. I decided to check with James just in case. James was happy about it. I might finish work early, he replied in an email. I told Olivia it was okay, and then I started preparing dinner. Olivia was using her smartphone, but then she stood up and went to the bathroom again. I didn't notice while cooking, but Olivia was gone for quite a while. When she came back, she was wearing a familiar necklace. It was my necklace. As I stared at the necklace, Olivia gave an embarrassed smile. How do I look? Does it suit me? She posed like a model. Seeing my stunned expression, Olivia started laughing. Oh, come on, I'm just kidding. I found it and thought it was cute. It must have been super expensive, right? A premium piece for sure, Olivia said, sounding like a child making an excuse for a mistake. That's a gift for James, 
Wow, he must be really wealthy to afford something like this. Olivia sighed, but more importantly, that necklace was stored in the closet in the bedroom. It seemed like Olivia had pretended to go to the bathroom and instead went to the bedroom to peek into the closet. I couldn't believe her actions. However, I didn't want to seem petty, so I just emphasized that it was a precious item. Taking advantage of my mild reaction, Olivia made a surprising request. Can I borrow this necklace for a while? I've got a date with a doctor I met on a dating app. I want to wear it for that. Please, she pleaded, putting her hands together as if praying. Reluctantly, I decided to lend it to her. All right, but take good care of it. Like I said earlier, it's a gift for James. As soon as Olivia knew she could borrow it, she smiled and started touching the necklace gently. Of course, I understand, she said, though she seemed to ignore my words. When I finished preparing the meal, I pretended to go to the bathroom to check the bedroom. Sure enough, the closet in the bedroom and the chest beside the bed weren't fully closed. Olivia must have opened every drawer and door she could find. There were fingerprints on the jewelry, watches, and precious metals. She might have touched things but probably didn't intend to borrow them. The shoes seemed to have been tried on, and the heels were bent out of shape. This was clearly going too far. I went back to the living room and asked Olivia, You touched various things in the bedroom, didn't you? The shoes are out of shape, and there are fingerprints on the watch. Olivia puffed out her cheeks a bit instead of looking sorry. Please don't do that again, I told her. Olivia went back to her normal face and said, Sorry. I didn't want to make a big deal out of it and risk hurting our friendship so I just laughed it off lightly. That's when James came home. He was holding a box of cake. It was the first time James and Olivia had seen each other since our wedding. It was awkward at first, but they slowly started talking and by dinner, they were chatting like old friends. While I was cleaning the dishes, they were laughing together. My boss is terrible, right? James said, laughing. I envy James's team, Olivia added. James was smiling, his eyes crinkling with laughter. That's not true, he replied. I was a bit uncomfortable seeing Olivia touch James so casually, but I thought it was better than them being distant. After all, James wasn't usually the type of man Olivia went out with. About a month after Olivia's visit, I noticed a change in James. He spent more time on his smartphone, which he usually didn't do. He often seemed distracted when I spoke to him and asked me to repeat myself. He always took his phone with him, even to the bathroom. It was a noticeable change. I felt like I was becoming a sheeted-on wife. I thought about checking James's phone once, but I hesitated to even touch it. Our conversations at home became increasingly rare. James started working on weekends much more often. He was hardly ever at home on weekends. Originally, we barely saw each other on weekdays, but now we weren't seeing each other on weekends either. It felt like we were living separately, even though we were in the same house. Moreover, we started sleeping in separate bedrooms under the excuse of his tiredness. I was thinking about divorce or separation when I found divorce papers on the living room table. Upon closer inspection, James had already signed them, although I had suspected it actually seeing them still shocked me. With trembling hands, I called James. I just got home and saw this on the table. What does this mean? It means exactly what it looks like. I want a divorce, James replied. I pressed him for a real reason. I've fallen in love with someone else. It's not just an affair. I'm serious about it. It was clearly cheating. Then I heard a familiar female voice on the phone. It was Olivia. I'm dating James now. I even want to marry him, she said. Though I had suspected it, hearing it confirmed made my heart race and I broke out in a cold sweat. I fell for James the moment I saw him at your house. We exchanged contact details and started messaging. One thing led to another and here we are, Olivia explained. Her tone was harsh. Maybe this was her true nature. James says there's nothing left to discuss. Can you just sign the divorce papers and send them off? Olivia asked, 
I wanted to talk things over, so I asked her to tell James to come home. No way, we're living together now. You just need to sign the divorce papers. Good luck with your poor life, she replied, and then the call ended abruptly. I stood there, unable to move for a while. After that, sleepless nights continued for me. James didn't come home. I couldn't bring myself to touch the divorce papers. They just sat there untouched. Furthermore, Olivia kept sending me multiple photos of her and James together, flaunting her relationship. It seemed to be an intimate relationship, but this felt like harassment. My mental health deteriorated, my complexion worsened, and sometimes I'd become vacant even during the day. People around me became worried and strongly suggested I go to the hospital. I ended up being somewhat forcibly taken for treatment and started taking medication. I managed to find some peace and started to sleep again. I could somehow go to work, but then an unbelievable thing happened. When I returned from the hospital, something fell off in the room. Going to the bedroom and opening the closet, I found that bags and jewelry were missing. The count of jewelry and watches in the chest was off too. There was only one person who could have done this. Why would she do something like this? What had I ever done to her? My insomnia came back and I had more sleepless nights, barely getting through my days. During counseling at the hospital, when I mentioned the theft at home, I was strongly advised to consult a lawyer. I contacted the company's lawyer right away and set up an appointment. The lawyer asked me first, what would you like to do? I'll get a divorce. I want those two to face proper consequences. I answered immediately, surprising even myself. Just a little while ago, I was unsure what to do. I couldn't believe how easily those words came out of my mouth. Perhaps I really wanted to punish them after being tormented so unfairly. A week later, I received a message from Olivia. I had sent her a certified letter. Hey, what are you thinking, sending a certified letter to my workplace? Olivia sounded pretty angry, her voice filled with rage. You must have expected at least this much. Anyway, I'm leaving everything to my lawyer now. I hung up the phone. Olivia called several times after that, but I ignored all of them. Then James called. I had sent a certified letter to his parents' house. Apparently, his affair being exposed at home caused a huge uproar. I wanted to burst out laughing at his self-inflicted predicament, but managed to restrain myself. Feeling that leaving it all to the lawyer wouldn't be enough to calm my feelings, I decided to confront them both. I would denounce them thoroughly on the spot. The lawyer arranged the date and time, and we decided to have the discussion at the law office. A few days later, the two reluctantly showed up at the law office. I thought they would bring their own lawyer, but it seemed they came alone. Olivia stormed into the office, flinging the door open. James followed, looking uncomfortable. Finally, we meet, you coward, Olivia said, not hiding her anger at all. James tried to calm her down. You've been avoiding us all this time. Our wedding has been delayed because of you, Olivia said looking like she might throw her bag at me any moment. James was desperately trying to hold her back. As I watched them with a feeling of pity, the lawyer nodded at me. Please calm down. If any violence or abusive language occurs, we will immediately call the police, the lawyer said. The mention of the police made Olivia stiffen. With the lawyer's intervention, Olivia and James took their seats, becoming calmer. We sat across from each other at the office table, ready to start the discussion. James, you're seeking a divorce, correct? I asked. Olivia sat angrily while James slumped, looking defeated. We agree to the divorce. However, since your relationship is considered adultery, we will ask for alimony, I stated. James's face clouded over. I'll agree to the divorce, but once the alimony is paid, don't contact us ever, he said. I quietly nodded in agreement. Olivia looked displeased, maybe expecting more resistance from me. When the lawyer began discussing the alimony amount, Olivia snapped, I said any amount is fine. We have plenty of money. Olivia sat arrogantly with her arms crossed. The lawyer looked at her with interest, then said, oh yes, didn't he tell you? 
James is the president of a jewelry company with a yearly revenue of $3 billion. James looked up frantically, trying to restrain Olivia's arm. Alimony for an affair is nothing to us. I'll even give a proper share of the property. Olivia continued excitedly, her face flushed. James tried hard to calm her down. Olivia shook off his hand and continued. You can barely make ends meet on your salary, right? She scoffed with a laugh. The lawyer burst into uncontrollable laughter. Olivia looked at him with a puzzled expression. The lawyer, wiping tears with a handkerchief, said, Actually, the president is Karen. Olivia was dumbstruck, her mouth hanging open. James hung his head, his body trembling slightly. James is just an ordinary employee with no position at Karen's company. I am Karen's corporate lawyer, I stated. Olivia started laughing loudly. What are you talking about? Are you really a lawyer? Can lawyers lie? She asked. The lawyer calmly replied, Why not ask James next to you if what I said is a lie? James, meanwhile, just bit his lip, looking down. Olivia, growing anxious, grabbed James's arms and began shaking him. You said you were the president of a $3 billion jewelry company. That's not a lie, right? James remained silent. He covered his face with his hands, uttering inaudible moans. Olivia, growing more desperate, gripped his arms tighter, repeatedly asking, Answer me, it's not a lie, right? James finally whispered in a raspy voice, I'm sorry. The room fell into a deep silence. Olivia's strength seemed to leave her body, and she let her hands that were gripping James fall limply. You said you were the president of a company making $3 billion a year, she muttered almost to herself. James's single apology had plunged Olivia into despair. She stood up, trembling. It's a lie, right? There's no way you're the president. Olivia pointed at me accusingly. Why didn't I know about this after all we've shared? I spoke to Olivia calmly as if guiding her. Just because we're close friends doesn't mean I tell you everything, especially since you were so fixated on money. I had no intention of telling you. I looked Olivia straight in the eyes without averting my gaze. Olivia seemed to lose all her energy and slumped down. Then that house, of course, the house is in my name, so James will be the one leaving, I continued. Olivia fell silent, and James continued to hold his head. James probably didn't want to come here. He knew this would happen. But if he didn't come here, things would be worse. It's hell either way for him now. James is left with nothing but hell waiting for him. The lawyer began to present the evidence. I had first gathered these photos of James and Olivia together. They were the photos she sent to my phone, now printed out. The lawyer placed a voice recorder on the table and played a recorded conversation. Why would you send something like this? I just wanted to share our happiness with you. Olivia's voice filled the room, while James seemed to be holding back tears. Hey, still clinging to the past. I want to divorce quickly. I know what you're clinging to. It's James's income. He's the president of a $3 billion jewelry company, right? You hid it because you thought I might take it, Olivia said, perhaps embarrassed, and covered her face with her hands. Hurry up and divorce and leave that condo. It'll be mine soon. Too bad James didn't come back to you. I'll give you as much alimony as you want. Poor thing, your aim was the money, not James. I'm speechless at how you've been deceived, James. James looked down tears spilling onto his pants. James and Olivia fell silent. Do you think this is over? What else is there, Olivia? You broke into the house when Karen wasn't there and stole several items, didn't you? The lawyer said calmly. James looked shocked, apparently unaware of this. Hey, what's this about stealing? Olivia bit her lower lip, her hands shaking. No, not me. I don't know anything, she said. The lawyer placed a tablet on the table and played a video. It showed Olivia sneaking into the bedroom, taking bags and jewelry, and stuffing them into her bag. Olivia stared wide-eyed at the footage. What is this? Why are you recording me? Isn't this illegal surveillance? She asked. James covered his face with his hands. Inside our house, we've always had security cameras. 
Why didn't you tell me that earlier? Who would think you'd break in to steal? I started to get a headache from their ridiculous argument. And you used my key without permission. I wanted those things. It's your fault for not buying them for me. One argued. They kept arguing, ignoring us and the lawyer and I could only watch in disbelief. Please save your arguments for later. Regarding this theft, we will be filing a police report, I said. Olivia seemed to panic at the mention of the police. The police? That's a bit much, isn't it? I just borrowed something from a friend, she protested. I never gave you permission to borrow anything, I replied calmly. Besides, you're not a friend, you were just a classmate. That's why I'm filing a police report. Olivia seemed to realize she was defeated, and her attitude turned gloomy. Don't say that. I'll pay for it. I'll make up for it. Just please don't call the police. Olivia started to kneel and apologize. I looked down at her and said coldly, You're going to compensate. The value of what you stole is more than your annual income. Are you sure about that? Olivia was speechless. And there's also the matter of the alimony. Olivia turned to James, pleading in a tearful voice. You'll pay, right? Even if you're not the president, you still earn well, right? James was silent, looking down. He can't pay it because he's about to be fired, I added. James looked up in surprise. That's right, since leaving the house, James has not shown up for work. Plus, with this commotion, there have been complaints from his boss, I explained. James looked like he might collapse on the floor. But there's still the property division, right? I'll pay with that, Olivia said, but that wasn't possible. Karen and James had a prenuptial agreement about property. You didn't hear anything from James, did you? He never told you the inconvenient truths, I said, looking at James with disdain. The lawyer placed the contract on the table. The agreement stated that if the marriage lasted less than five years, neither party could claim the other's property. Currently, they were in the three years of their marriage. Olivia tried to grab the document, as if to tear it up. You should handle that document carefully. It's a notarized deed, and you could be held legally accountable for damaging it, I warned her. At the mention of a crime, Olivia stopped. She then half-heartedly pleaded with James, James, you have savings, right? Use that to pay. James looked at Olivia with resentful eyes. What money? You always wanted sushi, steak, this, that. There's no way I have any savings left. It appeared he also had debts from questionable sources. Olivia's shoulders slumped. It was a pishable sight. The glamorous appearance that used to make men turn their heads was gone. This was the result of the seeds she had sown herself. The two sat looking haggard and lost, muttering, This wasn't supposed to happen, and what will I do now? I decided to leave the rest to the lawyer and stood up to leave. Olivia, money isn't something you steal from others. It's something you earn through effort. After that, the divorce went through smoothly. I sent all of James's belongings back to his parents. His parents kept apologizing to me and even sent a letter of apology. Olivia was interrogated by the police for illegal entry and theft. My police report led to an investigation, and Olivia was arrested after admitting her guilt. Half of the stolen items had been sold, but I got the rest back. Despite the maliciousness of her actions, her show of remorse and intent to compensate suggested she might receive a suspended sentence. However, Olivia had other crimes. It was revealed that she had been stealing from men she met on a dating app, which meant she would likely face a prison sentence. No wonder she reacted so strongly to the mention of police and crime. James couldn't live in Olivia's apartment and moved to a two-apartment on the outskirts of town. He's looking for a job, but his unexplained absences and poor attitude at his last job make it hard for him to get hired. For now, he's getting by with day labor. After the divorce, I threw myself into my work. Now, I'm expanding our company's jewelry line to Europe. The idea came after a trip to Europe that I took as a break from everything. During that trip, I had the chance to share a glass of wine with the owner of a jewelry store in Switzerland. We talked passionately about jewelry designs. 
The owner and I hit it off, and he agreed to showcase my company's jewelry in his store. The owner is a wonderful man who, perhaps because of his own history with divorce, understands my heart act. To be honest, I'm focusing on sales in Switzerland, partly to see him. It might be mixing business with pleasure, but I think I've earned this perk after all I've been through. That's how tough it has been for me. I receive regular updates on their situations from the lawyer after the divorce.